Hello, welcome to another episode of Mopo where we discuss matters of personal opinion. It's all Mopo. I'm at the Scientist here with at Dave Roach eighty three talking about episode ten, season three of the Big G Gotham. What's A that? Mad City. Gotham. Yes. Um, it's pre- I thought it was a pretty wild episode. Kind of ended, uh, began crazy and ended crazy. Like it's definitely a mad city. Yeah, uh, like. I think it's living up to the name. <laughs> um, definitely have some things going on in this episode. Uh, gonna be starting off. We got like. Mario and Lee are sitting down at dinner and they're discussing the wedding and yeah, it's like they're deciding where they're gonna have their uh, rehearsal dinner. Yeah, and um, uh, Lee mentions the fact that you know they they talk about the Tetch virus because uh, Don Falcone comes in and this one servant guy is all oh it's so nice to be working with you oh, again Don. Uh, Don. Uh, yeah, you know. Like, trying to kiss the ring and stuff. Right. Which, you know, kind of... it. You can see it in Lee's face. She's kind of like, like It's what? not about that. Like, to, to in her mind, like, why does it got to be about Don Falcone? Like, this is our day. You, you think that's what it is? Yeah, kind of. Like, you know, like, weary, but at the same time, like, you know how women are about their weddings. Okay. And uh, Lee also mentions, because uh, the Tetch virus comes up, and she talks about there being a, a screening for it, or a way to find out if someone's infected. And, and it, it's a good start at getting a cure. Exactly, exactly. And what caught my eye, which I, you know, I didn't put it together till the very end, uh, no jumping ahead, but I'm like, why is Mario so curious? Because he goes, oh, oh, what? You do? When did that happen? And yeah. she's like, that's, that shit happened today. Yeah. Like, I just got the text. I mean, not really, but yeah. essentially. <laughs> she, like, like this morning. Or, right. And he seems kind of like... Very oh, interested in... Yeah? That's crazy. And and I, I was like, oh, man, he's just like a really interested husband. He's yeah, playing he's that card. putting on that front pretty hard yeah, for he's, his lady. He's really in love. But, so, we kind of leave it with that. We also got Gordon, because as they're leaving, boom, we got a car bomb. Yeah, the like, oh, Don Falcone, I'll go get the car for you. Yeah. Whatever, he runs over, and uh, Mario and Lee are standing a few, you know, maybe like 10, 20 feet in front of them, uh, maybe 50 feet away from the car. All of a sudden, the car blows up, and they get knocked back. I'm like, that is not that big of an explosion for that to happen, but I guess for emphasis... Yeah, it might have, like, a, a percussion... But, um, it actually made sense, because we'll find out in a few moments, you know, that maybe that, that hit was a little bit more than what it, you know, looked like. But... Oh, I think I know where you're going with this, and I didn't even put that together. That's crazy. <laughs> Um, all right, we'll we'll talk about that when we get to the end then. Uh, yeah, so so like uh, Gordon gets called onto the scene and he's he's kind of suspecting Falcone of coming out of retirement, which kind of yeah, he's all like yeah, you know. Well, Falcone rolls up on him like we gotta talk. Yeah, and Falcone and all assumes like, it's about him. Like, come on, Falcone! Like, you know, you don't think nobody's trying to get at you, you know? And he's all like, yeah, you know, I, you know, who else better to get at me than through my oldest son, you know? He's getting married, you know. Hit, it, me. hit me where it hurts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so so there's kind of like a little bit of and suspicion Sato's there. all like, well, you know, I'm going to handle this. Yeah. He's and like, and no, he's let like, me handle this. He's like, you got one day. Right, yeah, he's, he does tell me he's got one day. Um, and... We also have, like, a little bit of thing going on with, you know, uh, in the background, like, Barbara's looking for Tabitha. Oh, yeah. Because she, apparently Tabitha's been missing. And, Ever like, since she went after Butch. Yeah, like, and she's at least been checking in, but she hasn't been checking in. 
So now, like Barbara, she's already a nut. So she's going to who she's pretty sure can give her some information on this, and that's the penguin. Yeah. And she just rolls right up in, gun pointed, right in the middle of a meeting, and everybody stands up and just points <laughs> a gun at her. And she don't even care. And she's just like... Where's my friend? Yeah. I, I gotta ask you something. or yeah. And he's like, oh, what? How to commit suicide? Because <laughs> yeah. you're gonna find out the answer. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, yeah, I just had a question for you. And... He's basically like, I don't know where where they are. Yeah, like, you need to get yeah. out of here. Like, you're totally out of line. But and as soon as she walks out the door, he like whips around to that and penguin I think phone. She, the uh, the Brumhilda lady or whatever. The uh, oh yeah, because she walks in before she leaves. Yeah, the maid walks in. I think Barbara knows she's gonna get her answers easier from that lady. And that's and why she gave up so easily. Yeah, that's why she just rolled out so, so that, That's quickly, a good observation. Without a fight. Yeah, and he just turns right around and calls Edward, yeah, like, who's on, got him locked up. Us, like, you need to hurry up because I can't handle this shit. You're my chief of staff. And Enigma's all like, dude, I told you I need to handle this. So you need to let me handle this. And he kind of like bangs on him. To go over to Butch and Tabitha, basically got him hemmed up. And he's basically going to torture these people because he thinks Butch killed Isabella. Yeah, pretty much. Isabella. Yeah, that's Ooh. what I said. Oh, uh, you did? I threw the A out at the very end. With uh. the yeah. <laughs> Isabella. Yeah, because he... Don't let him catch you yeah. mispronouncing all, that name. He ain't I don't know. I would like to think he'd come up in here and talk that trash out. You give him the uh, give him the people's elbow. <laughs> the old Batutsi one too. Or whatever. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, uh, Bullock and Gordon are following like a lead on a guy named Fuse. Right, because Lucius Fox comes in while. All right, so. Gordon rolls up into the GCPD, and Bullock is sitting there. He kind of took over as an acting chief, like he did before, before Bullock came in. Um, kind of like, you know, I'm the senior dude. These guys look up to me, and kind of like, he doesn't want it, but his pride allows him to believe that these guys look up to him. Okay. Even though he doesn't want the job or whatever. He's, he's like, like yeah, I got the best chance of making this work. Yeah, and you know, he's not doing well with it physically because he's sitting there chugging on some Pepto-Bismol. Yeah, he is. Um, and Gordon rolls up on him and all, you know, joshing with him about it, but uh, Fox rolls up on them like, look, I got these reports like, this is like military grade explosives and like he used a, a certain way to make it more flammable and more, you know, more explosive than what it would seem. And that's when they're like, oh, there's only one dude that I know who, around here, that could do that. And that's when they, they go and try to get fuse. But when they roll up in the apartment, they come around the corner, and this dude's dead as a doornail. Yeah, yeah, it looks like, almost like the alien came out of his belly or something. Like, he ate some bad soup. Or something. Yeah, some bad, bad soup will come out your belly. Yeah, like you know, violently, space like an alien. Or an alien, in the movie. Oh, uh, because he, he had the out soup. Yeah. <laughs> come out your belly and stuff. But that's what he kind of what he looked like, though. I'm like, how did he get killed? Yeah, like it could have been gunshots. Could have been like violent stabbing to but one area. He was stabbed or shot. Like he was multiple times in one area. Yeah, like and almost. Dude, man was mad at him or something. It could have been a woman who killed him. Ooh, Might like out. one inch punched him through the stomach. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Mm. Or maybe he was all like, Amushiva, Amushiva. But he went in through the belly instead of the like, chest. Um, Temple of Doom. You talking about um, Fist of the North Star? No, Star? Temple of Doom. Amushiva. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, whatever. Moving on. Yeah, so uh, that, it ends up being a dead end, uh, literally. 
and they assume that whoever hired them killed them to clean up loose ends. You know, they don't want anybody knowing. Uh, but they do find out, you know, that they're after Mario. Yeah, and not and Falcone. not Falcone. So you know, the object now is to keep them safe. Um, it's actually funny because Just Gordon so and happens. Yeah, Gordon and Mario are talking, and you know. He's just like, yeah, like you really should stay at the precinct. He's like, I don't want to. He's like, eh, it might be in your best interest to like give it a thought. You know, at least hang out for a little bit. Blah blah blah. Walks on over to Bullock. No. And he's like, no, yeah. yo, uh, keep an eye on Mario, okay? And then he just kind of whips his head right around, starts he staring like, at basically him. Basically, turns around and says, oh, you mean Mario yeah, right yeah, there? over there, like blowing up the spot. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm keeping an eye on him. He's like, don't <laughs> look at him. <laughs> Like, covertly, just make sure he doesn't leave. But uh, Mar Mario bounces out. Yeah, I mean, and he's obviously. like, I got people to save. I'm going to the hospital. I'm a doctor, damn it. I'm a, I'm a doctor, damn it. Not a stand-arounder. <laughs> not, not a victim. Better. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he's, he's out. Um, we have... Uh, we have like a little bit of a storyline with Ivy. Uh, well, Bruce, Alfred, and Ivy, and Selena, where Selena, well, rather, Ivy kind of seduces Alfred with her pheromones. Right. And escapes. And meanwhile, while that's taking place, we have Bruce and Selena kind of having a tiff about, you know, their relationship status. Like, why, yeah. why? Why? Why'd you say we weren't a and, couple in front of you know, Ivy? It's like why'd you say we were? You know, it's like why can't we just be us? Yeah, like and because you're a hoe, Catwoman, or whatever. You're the hoe from the jump, or whatever. You don't want to be with Bruce, but you want Bruce for what he can do for you, or whatever. You're fucked up. But um, I tell you what, Ivy, you don't even gotta put on the perfume for me, or whatever. She got them codes. A lot easier than that for me, but um, what made me mad was he made these some like frutadas or whatever look like some quiche. Like those things look delicious, and they're sitting there like scoffing at it. And I'm like, that's three pieces of between Ivy, Bruce, and Selena that I would have ate. <laughs> like. And I don't appreciate that they are like, because they didn't look like he put onions in there or nothing. Like, it looked good. Right? And it's like he's laying down the cooking skills and they just like, whatever. Right. How come he can't just make fries? And, <laughs> right? He's like, oh yeah, maybe some fr french fries with it. But, um, Selena wants to leave. Ivy wants to leave. Like, well, I leave. Ivy does leave. They, well, don't, yeah. they don't realize. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the objective and, ends up being trying to find Ivy, but that's only after they discover this... Well, because they're, like, dissolving the crystal that they found in the previous episode that had, the like, the key in yeah. it. And they dissolve it, and it ends up being a key with an owl on it. So now this is something that really blows up in this episode. Like, it, it starts with this key, and then it just turns into something completely its own, and it actually redefines... A an image that we had from earlier episodes. Yeah, well, well right, I mean, we're not going to get to that right now. But I'm like setting it up. The court of owls, for sure. Yeah, the court of owls. I mean, well, I didn't know about that. I mean, not when I saw the key. I was just like, yo, that's an owl. <laughs> but I wasn't like, oh, well, duh, it's the court of owls. Right. I don't know. I, I put it together pretty. You know, is that something that's from the comics? Yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well then, like, it's no secret. I'm just a big dummy. Uh, yeah, uneducated or, like, unknown. I wouldn't call it dumb. We just don't we, know uh, about it. You're not going to call it dumb, but it's uneducated. Ignorant. I mean, ignorant isn't dumb. Arr, these are all offensive <laughs> words. <laughs> don't worry about nice words right now. Uh, all right, so the council that we've been up to this point knowing it as is, is the Court, the of, court owls. of Owls. Yes. That uh, that's that's something that I was unaware of, and I mean, I guess that lady's mask is kind of like yeah, an owl, a snow owl. Yeah. I didn't put that together. 
little snow out. It wasn't until the key that I realized, I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you started geeking out, I'm sure. You're like, yeah, getting to the good stuff. Um, but essentially, Ivy gets herself caught. Yeah. Because she's a big dummy. And Sexy dummy. I mean, now. Uh, yeah, but... Oh, uh, hold on, you still saying she's really still 14 or whatever? Like, she... Or 13 or however old she was? Like She aged physically, but she didn't age mentally. Yeah, but that is a doozy of a dandy of a... She's a big dummy, dude. She's still thinking about, like, whatever 14-year-old girls think about. But, dude, like... This is off topic of everything, but I'm like... What's blowing your mind right now? It's, it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I mean, like, I'm sure you've been out with of age women that were completely mentally immature. Yeah, but it's a And there ain't girl. no magic turning them older, so if that shit is legal. But, this girl but if grown, they look at her birth certificate, you're fucked. They're going to say she's big for her age. Right, they're like, this is a grown ass little girl right now. <laughs> God damn it, you can't even get away with it in the TV and the movies. But, um, yeah, yeah, she gets her little ass caught, and they're like, look, you want your little friend, you give us back our Well, our no, jewel. You, you give, yeah, our jewel, the necklace. Because they don't know that, you know, they they melted it, or, you know, broke it off, and, like, they don't, yeah. they know that it's a key, but they don't know that Bruce and Selena and them know that it's Until a key. Bruce, like, r right, like, hard, he's just like, we, you mean the key? Yeah. It's like, because when they go to meet him, it's like, all right, hand over the necklace. He's like, don't you mean the key? Yeah. But, and also, I think we kind of skipped over it a little bit. We go between Bruce and Selena thing, because, like, Selena's all trying to leave. And she's like, oh, I can take care of myself. Oh, uh, like, yeah. She, he's like, yeah, no doubt. Or whatever. She's like, what is that supposed to mean? He's like, yeah, whatever. And then that that's when later on it kind of blows up. Like, oh, why'd you tell her? Or like, oh, why did you tell her? Or whatever. And it's like, oh, I'm just saying she's a hoe. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so many tangents this today. Um, yeah, so uh, they they meet up with this group who revealed to them that, you know, this council They're not is, with the court of yeah. They're against them. Because Bruce is like, yo, let me talk to your boss. Let yeah. me talk to Catherine is her name, right? Mm -hmm. Let me talk to Catherine. I need to explain stuff. I don't want her touching my friends. I need to ensure their safety. And he's like, this late, you know, this, this friend of yours is telling you nothing but lies. Her assurances are bullshit. And yeah, he's like, wait, you're not dead. with them? And they're like, no, we're not with them. Like, we hate those people. Like, we're against them. Yeah, we're, and it's kind of like a enemy of my enemy is my friend type deal. Because I mean, they still don't know who these people really are. Yeah, like, like, like they, they call themselves the Whisperer Gang, the Whisperers <laughs> Gang, the Whisper Gang. Oh, they're supposed to be smugglers. Yeah, of some sort. And they're looking for the key because apparently it's supposed to open a safe, and whatever's in the safe makes the Court of Owls very nervous. Apparently, whatever... They they keep implying that it's a weapon, but the the leader of the Whisper Gang is straight up like, dude, we don't know what it is, but it'll take them down, whatever it is. It is. Um, mm. And, you know, so they kind of go their separate ways, I, I guess, you know, with an agreement to get back together and, you know, talk more and figure stuff out. Um... And I guess it's as the leader of the Whisper Gang is going to his car or something with, you know, his his homies. Like, all of a sudden, they, he gets jumped by, like, one dude in... He looked like the Green Hornet. A little bit. Like, it, it, it almost seems... It was kind of... It was kind of like an owl-shaped mask, but it was straight up like... Like, Kato. Uh, like... It, it, it was strange. Yeah. It, 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 and he's just beating him up, like big old fight. He does like a Van Dam off the car, yes. and finishes off the leader of the Whisper Gang. And, I mean, like you don't see it because it's kind of like a black screen, but it's implied that they did get stabbed at least. Oh yeah, like, I would assume dead. Dead. Yeah. So I mean, we'll have to see what goes on with all that. 
but before he's killed, he's he's kind of interrogating them all, like, you know, I heard you were looking for the the second key. Don't they say second key? Yeah, second key. So now it's like, where's the first key? What is, is this the second key? Is is this and the are, first key? And are both keys needed to get into this safe, or do you just need one? But yeah, it's it's very it's very elusive. Um, like, just not really sure where this is going. Uh, it gets even deeper later on, but let's jump back to Barbara and her hunt for Tabitha. Okay, yeah, like, cause she, like, is basically, she goes to see Helga or... I don't, I don't know. Her Olga. Name. Olga. Um, and she... Barbara grew up around, you know, this kind of life. Like, she knows if she wants to get the good info, she goes to the help. And she knows how to get that info from the help. She smoothes her a little bit, flashes some jewelry in front of her face, offers her the jewelry to get the info, basically, if she needs and. She starts talking about Enigma because the old lady loves Oswald. Well, that's what I thought was uh, funny because she's like, "Oh, there's uh, Oswald's not doing nothing." Yeah, like he's a good man. He treats me well. I don't, like, I don't Enigma. like. Yeah, uh, but she says something like, like "I don't know, I don't know why he wastes him. his time <laughs> with that man." And basically, outs the penguin to Barbara, and Barbara's all like, "Well, we're, well we're, we'll we're, dish about this yeah, later. We can talk about that at another time." Because wow, but and that that was that was kind of funny, but. And she goes, uh, you know, I don't, Enigma. I don't know anything about what an Enigma's doing, but he did say something about a delivery, but all that came in the mail was a bill. Yeah. And she looks at the bill, and it's all this like bondage stuff. So, you know, she's resourceful. She goes to the your neighborhood Gotham bondage store, and kind of. Coerces the store clerk into Once a again, lock. Uh, what is it? What is it? Like, uh, uh, a stock? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Stock. The stocks. Yeah, and it's like, and then like dominates them. Just starts like whipping the shit out I of mean, it, and he's loving it. Yeah, I was gonna say she all squeezed his ass and it's all like whispering in his ear and stuff and like and she's role playing like I'll be the ban- I'll be the dirty bank robber and, and you need to give me the combination she's like yeah you uh, you help me out I've saved my friend I'll come back here and uh, thank you personally and whatnot. and that's all she would have to do for Dave Roach you don't have to beat me up or like tie me up you come in there acting sexy smiling and flirting and promise some stuff later on or something like that or you know maybe like like she wouldn't have to do all that yeah right she wouldn't have to go through all that that nonsense but um but she gets her you know her information and, and she, what's in the safe is the address to where the stuff got caught or delivered exactly and and that leads well well before we uh, basically that leads her to Edward yeah. And Tabitha and Butch. And but Butch. meanwhile, while this is going on, like, Butch is getting the living hell zapped out of him. Like, one flew over the cuckoo's nest style. Uh, style yeah, sure like, not. electrocution. And Tabitha's just ball gagged, and she's just got to basically deal with it. And he's just like, meh, 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 meh. You know, like, uh, you know, tell me about Isabella and all that. And, you know, he don't want to hear Butch it. And is all like, dude, I don't know what the fuck you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't know her. Fuck you. And, and like, you know, Nickman don't want to hear that because he's, uh, he's convinced Butch did it to get revenge on him. Yeah, and it, it was, it's funny because when I say, like, Butch has been through a lot, I mean, like, not just this episode. There was a point in this episode where he's getting electrocuted and his eyes kind of roll back, and I don't know why, but all of a sudden I was kind of reminded of, you know, you know, he used to work for Fish, Fish yeah. right? And he was like a good dude, right? But then all of a sudden he got his hand cut off, and then as he got his hand cut off, he's like 
brainwashed by Tabitha, right? Because she like she does a number on him yeah. early on, and which is kind of the reason why I feel like he's in love with her right now, even though it might be kind of like a like a faded Stockholm syndrome kind of thing, right? Where it but might be real at this point, him. but still, yeah, like who wouldn't like a girl like that? Um, mm-hmm. And you know, just everything that Penguin put him through. Yeah, you know, just along the way. To, and now all this, like this guy, he's lived. Whew, he's been through a lot, for sure. But yeah, so you know, Edward doesn't want to hear anything about it. So he's basically gives them an ultimatum where it's like, I got this guillotine. I'm going to put it on Tabitha's hand, and I'm going to put a buzzer in Tabitha's hand that controls the electrocution to Butch. And it's basically like, you either tell me where Isabella, like, you know, you. I don't even think it's tell me about Isabella. It's like, this is now your destiny. Yeah. It's like one or the other. Either Tabitha electrocutes Butch to death, or she gets her hand cut off and they both live. And, and Tabitha is like, sorry, Butch, but I never really was a love kind of person. And it's like, oh, damn. But then he kind of does this whole sob thing where he's like, oh, it's okay, you know, for a guy like me, me loving you is good enough, you know, because, you know, you're a great person, I enjoy being around you, yada yada, okay. sobby sobby. And Tabitha is all like, oh, okay, you know what, you know, you're, you're, a, you're a good guy. And she kind of drops the buzzer and... Butch tries to get him, tries to get Edward to let Tabitha go by basically confessing what he did to Isabella. He's like, yeah, that's right, yeah, like, uh, let her go, I'll tell you what I did to her. It's like, I, I put the gun to her head, I blew her brains out, and the last thing she said to me was she wished she was with a real man. And that's when, like, Edward's like, wait, shot her in the head? Like, she was in yeah. a car accident, but... Like while all this is happening, he has time to shut off the guillotine, but he's he's so stuck in wrapping his mind around what's going on yeah. that Tabitha's hand gets cut off. Dude, she lifts up that stump, looks at it, and immediately faints. Like I'm like, dude, that's me. I like I'd be like, ah, no hand, you know. I'm done. I'm gone. You better somebody better save me and put a belt around my arm because right. I'm not. Something. I'm not going to make it if on my own. Mm. Um, right then, Barbara barges in with the gun, and she's, like, basically sticking up Edward, and he's kind of just, like, in a daze. He just turns around, and he's like, you might want to put that hand on ice. And, you know, once Barbara yeah. sees what's going on, you know, she's occupied with that. And so, <laughs> Nigma just walks off. Barbara... Tabitha and Butch, well, Barbara and Ta- uh, Barbara and Butch take Tabitha to the hospital. They got her hand on ice in a baggie, and the hospital staff are all like, "Yo, what are you doing in here? You can't like just come into this wing." And they're like, "Boom!" And then all of a sudden they're like, "We got a hand! We got a hand! <laughs> Clear away, people!" <laughs> and uh, and Barbara's sitting there, and she's thinking to herself, like, "Who would kill this librarian?" And Butch is being kind of an asshole. Oh, someone to overdo book. And, you know, she's like, no, I would cut her brake lines. You know, it'd have to be someone who knew where she was going. Like, knew where she was going. Like, you know, it'd have to be someone who knew her. You know, like, who knows this broad? Yo, right. like, who would care? And then it's like, oh, damn, Olga told me that Penguin's got a heart on for this cat. Penguin did it. And now it's like, oh, bum, 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 what are they going to do with this info? Is really what it comes down to, because shit's going to hit the fan, I think. But, so, back to the main storyline, as far as with this whole Falcone situation. You know, Falcone is all like, yo, Gordon, you better keep my son safe. Like, I don't need anything happening to him. You know, um, but lo and behold, while he's out at the jewelry store, 
buying uh, the rings and stuff. He's uh, I think he's got Gordon with him, right? I think he's got Gordon with him, right? Yeah. At the ring store. Yeah. Yeah, because then um, uh, these assassins bust in and try to take him out, and. Like, he manages to grab this pin or something, and he, like, stabs the dude in the eye who's choking him out. And he's all like, why are you after me? Like, what is this all about? And and the dude just looks at him, and he's all like, you know why. And it's like, wait a second, he knows why. I knew he was involved in this in this somehow. Yeah, like, you don't just... Too shady. Yeah. Too shady. And so they got the this guy in custody... And Gordon and Bullock are talking, and Falcone, uh, like, they got Falcone, they're like, yo, you know this guy? And Falcone's like, I don't know this guy. And, you know, Falcone and Bullock get preoccupied somehow, I guess, on the whereabouts of Mario and how he's doing. I, 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 I kind of forget. But somehow Falcone gets left alone with this guy. And he just kind of walks his way into the interrogation room, and he's all like, hey, buddy. Like, so who do you work for? And he just, like, smashes his face into the uh, <clears throat> table. Pulls out a knife. I'm thinking he's going to kill this guy, but I, I should have been smarter than that. Like, Bullock and Gordon are talking, and all of a sudden, Gordon sees the camera, and he's like, Oh, shit, Falcone! You know, and he sees him, like, basically... He's got the knife in the dude's face, is what the angle yeah. looks like. I'm like, yo, this guy's stabbing his eye out. He's, like, going to pot Like, this is now mine, kind of thing. Like, scoop it out. I don't know why he's not using a spoon, but, you know... The, I figure a knife would pop an eye. Right. But you walk in, and he's actually, like, prying a tooth out of this dude's face. Mm. And it's like a gold cap tooth, and uh, on the inside of the tooth, it's like a back molar. It's, like, this uh, owl eyes. Oh, shoot. Right? And he kind of looks at it, and he just kind of pockets it. And it's like, oh, damn, yo, the court of owls are in on this, like... This is a heavy quarter owls type deal. Yeah. Episode. Uh, everything's blowing up. So he kind of walks off. He's like, "I'm handling this on my own, Gordon. This is this an old affiliate yeah. of mine. Like we're doing this Your my day way." Your is over. And Gordon's like, "Dude, you assaulted this guy in police custody." And he's like, "He ain't gonna press charges." So mm -hmm. he just like walks off. It's like, "All right, Don Falcone out of retirement over here." But then, little do we know. We got, uh. We find out that Mar uh, like Don Falcone has a meeting with Catherine. Yeah. And, which is from the Court of Vows. And we find out that somehow Mario is involved with the Court of Vows. And Falcone's like, you know, like, why are you after my son? And they're like, well, you know, that's above your pay grade kind of thing. It's like, they basically told him, it's none your business. Yeah, none your. And and he's like, yo, I helped you get Indian Hill, you know, like, that that was me, and, like, all this other stuff that he was helping them with. And she's just like, listen, like, we'll hold off for right now, but, you know, we're going to be asking some favors, and you better deliver, like, immediately. Mm -hmm. So you kind of think it's, you kind of think it's old, uh, over, and, like, right before they depart, you know... Don Falcone's like, you know, I, I I feel like you're not telling me uh, telling me everything, and she's like, oh, I'm not telling you a lot, like don't even get it twisted, you are mm -hmm. not in the loop, and mm. you know that was that was kind of kind of gritty, but then we got um Lee, I th I th I th no, thought this is Gordon went to Lee. No, this is Gordon's apartment. Lee went to Gordon's apartment. Yeah, because you, you go over to Gordon's apartment, he's just, I guess, you know, relaxing for the night or whatever, just get home, and Lee pops up, talking about, oh, uh, I was going to the rehearsal dinner, but I found myself telling the uh, cabbie your address. So, then, oh, Instead of being like, oh, my bad, hold on, no, I mean this. Let's just go visit Jim Gordon on the night before your wedding. Yeah, right, but it, but it ends up being for nothing anyway, because she basically just, she basically, like, well, well, first, he takes, uh, Gordon takes this as a chance to be like, yo, I'm really sorry I never got to give you that life, you know, that's on me, 
Yeah. I, really, I really wanted that for us, but you know, my job got in the way, yada yada. Like, uh, you know, I kind of had my priorities messed up. Like, I apologize, and you know, she's like, "It's cool." Kind of like gives him a little kiss, but mm -hmm. I, it's like a kiss goodbye. Like they, they never got to do. Yeah, may, maybe something like that. Yeah, it's like the, finally it's like that the official closure. Yeah, given that relate that physical relationship closure, like. And uh, so she leaves. You know, and by the way. Yo, Old stalky this well, no, I was gonna say that coat she was wearing, that white coat, <laughs> so not flattering is she at all. Pregnant? She like, looks like a snowman. She looks fat as shit. She like she was in one of those sumo suits, yeah. <clears throat> but it looks like a like a coat. Uh, I don't know, uh, like bad. Uh, like if she's not pregnant and they're not trying to hide something, you know, as as her as an actress, like her character yeah. isn't pregnant, so she as a person can't, can't be, be showing pregnant. this. Yeah, yeah. If they're not hiding anything like that, whoever dressed her for that scene should be fucking fired. fired. Yeah, that, yeah, that was horribly unflattering. <laughs> but uh, you got her leaving, and Mario just happens to be like in that neighborhood, like yeah, like wasn't he supposed to be at the rehearsal? Like, what are you doing? He's bro? like, oh, I told my feet Gordon's address too. Yeah, <laughs> I just found myself coming to Gordon's. You but, stalker um, weirdo. And so like. He, he he all of a sudden like he's not talking, but you hear like voices in his head. Like she loves him, she loves him. and she it's loves like him she too. loves him. What yeah. the hell? And these two dudes are like, oh hey buddy, you in the wrong neighborhood. Hey, you gotta give, pay the tax. I'll uh, give you some directions over here. It costs you everything. Uh huh. And uh, he like choke slams them on fire, or whatever. Chokes him up because she like. He's mine. Yeah, and like, or, like fist, uh, like the guy, the uh, other guy punches him and he grabs the fist oh yeah, and like, like breaks his arm right there on the Batman spot. Batman style. Yeah, and he's, yeah, he just starts screaming like he, she loves me. Yeah, yeah, and then his veins start popping out and <sighs> this motherfucker got the text virus. Got the text virus, and and that's why at the beginning of this episode I was like, that's weird that he was really interested yeah. about that screening. Did he know I he had he the virus? But then, it, all right. So if he if he already knew he had the virus before that dinner, that would prompt him to be so interested in this screening. What did you mean by the car explosion? That Lucius Fox came up to them and was like, "Oh, this is a bigger explosion than what it, it was supposed to look like." Oh, they did that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. We oh, okay. So we that. were talking about the no, same no. thing. Oh, all right. I thought we were done. We were talking about the same thing. All right. But uh, crazy ending. Yeah. Um, wow. I'm, I'm surprised to see where the hell is this going. That means that means Lee and Gordon are basically getting back together. We'll see. Or maybe, maybe. Oh man, it would suck. Barbara becomes the like they have a daughter and they name it Barbara and it becomes and. Gordon has to adopt the baby because something happens to Lee. And this is like adopted baby. Wait, so you think Mario and Lee are going to get together and name her child Barbara? She's already pregnant, maybe, because the big puffy... Oh, you think they're just trying to hide it for right now? Maybe. Ooh, you heard it first. I mean... I mean, it's kind of like already fan, over. Fan so. theory or yeah. whatever, but... Uh, but no, like, um, I don't know. That would be pretty wild if they did get back but together. But then it's like, oh, I'm going to name my kid after the woman who, like, went psycho on me because she thinks that's, I stole her boyfriend? Yeah, that's a big question. What, we, the, what kind of weird love yeah. triangle is going on? I mean, we've been watching this show from the beginning and kind of talking about it. Yeah, and, like, uh, how is Gordon's kid going to be named Barbara? I mean, we know these characters. So we know that Jim Gordon has a daughter named Barbara Gordon. And she becomes Batgirl and Oracle and so on and so forth. How? Who's, who's that baby's mama? Yeah, right? Where's this baby Who coming from? Who is this baby's mama and why does he name that baby Barbara? Especially after Barbara Keen running around. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, for a second I was like, maybe he finds the baby in, like, an alleyway. But then how would he get, like inspired to name it Barbara and then I'm like oh what if Barbara was like dead next to the baby and it was like and he's just like oh little baby I'll take you in I don't know what your name is so I'll just name you after who I assume your mother is Barbara you know 
and kind of being like, I'll, I'll raise this crazy lady's three, baby. Three years later, we are no closer. Th- yeah, three years later, we're, that, that was one of the number one things you and I have been trying to figure out since, since like, yeah. episode one, yeah. season one, and still not a damn clue. Because it started with, what, he's going to have a baby, and you're going to name it Barbara Jr.? Yeah, right, right. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, I guess we'll kind of end it there. I mean, let us know what you think about the episode. Um, I believe there's at least one more episode until the break, so we're going to get some kind of answers going on Hopefully, here. Hopefully, we'll see something. And, yeah, maybe not, you know, some extreme I mean, you know there's got there's to you know, be cliffhangers, because what's going to hold us on for two months, three months? The Batman. This is gonna keep us holding on for four or five years until they figure this out. Like, uh, that's why I'm watching. Okay. Well, I mean, of course, like, share, subscribe. Uh, remember, it's all mopo. Yeah, this is all matter of personal opinion. Yeah, you know, leave yours in the comments. Yeah, we'd like to hear yours. <laughs>